All right, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are doing a seven-round mock draft for the Pittsburgh Steelers, arguably, and I would say, the winners of free agency in 2024. What an off-season you guys have had. I'm really impressed. I am genuinely really impressed. And I think this mock draft, if you guys get the draft right this year, the sky's the limit for this team. I think you drafted well last year. I think the guys that you drafted last year are going to have a real impact this year, an even bigger impact this year. And I think if you draft correctly in the next month, then you guys can absolutely contend. Like, why can't you? You know, so I'm excited for the Pittsburgh Steelers. This is a completely different looking team with a new coordinator, new quarterbacks, all sorts of things that we're going to go through in today's video before we get into the seven round mock draft. So we'll go over free agency, then we'll go into the draft and all of those things. But Omar Khan has done a phenomenal job and is probably one of my favorite GMs in the NFL right now with the way that he is orchestrating things in Pittsburgh and building out this team. So we're going to go through team needs. We're going to go through the free agency period. We're going to go through the draft in its entirety as well. And by the end of it, we'll see how close the Pittsburgh Steelers are to contending in the division, in the conference, and all of those things too. I apologize. I've been gone for a couple of weeks. Uh, things on the client side, I'm a freelancer in the content industry, in the sports world. March Madness, everything going on, free agency, all of that. It got super chaotic and I have been unable to upload a video, but we're back. We've got about a month to go until the draft and we're going to be on it with more content, more videos and stuff. So please do subscribe to the channel. So let's bring up the current roster here on the screen. And in fact, no, let's go through free agency first in terms of the acquisitions and some of the things that the Pittsburgh Steelers have done. So the biggest addition, of course, of the three-year $41 million contract for Patrick Queen. That was huge, uh, obviously getting him from a division rival as well. Um, kind of adds to it. Then you've done the exchange with the punter. So you've gone from um, Percy, uh, Percy, I always forget his name, Presley Harvin, to uh, Cam Johnston. So get him from Houston. Uh, a couple of additions at safety. So bringing back Miles Killebrew uh, as a veteran. And then Deshaun Elliott, who you got from the Miami Dolphins, who, of course, is also a former Baltimore Raven. Uh, and I like what you're doing there with the culture. So both Patrick Queen and Deshaun Elliott have been in Baltimore. They know that kind of tough, gritty way to run your defense. Uh, obviously, Patrick Queen came over and said he wants to be the villain. Uh, so I do like that. I like the addition there. And obviously, the main thing is the complete overhaul of the quarterback room. So if we look at the current roster in Pittsburgh... Last year, it was no secret that the QB room was a colossal problem, right? Kenny Pickett, I didn't like coming out of college. He was the first quarterback off the board in a really bad QB year in, in the draft. Didn't love it. Didn't work out. Obviously, Mason Rudolph, we know what he is at this point, And Mitchell Trubisky is Mitchell Trubisky right now. Like, these guys are not guys that are going to win you playoff games. They're not guys that are going to help you go on a run through the playoffs. So you need to kind of make an adjustment there. So obviously the key talking point for the Pittsburgh Steelers is the fact that you have zero quarterbacks in the room that were on the roster last year, but you have two quarterbacks who offer very different stories going into this year. Obviously Russell Wilson, this is a zero risk situation for Pittsburgh, right? He's playing he, you're paying him a vet minimum contract. So as much money as Russell Wilson is getting this year doesn't make a blind bit of difference to the Pittsburgh Steelers because Denver are paying you for the rental, right? Denver are paying Russell Wilson so that you can see how good he might be on the Pittsburgh Steelers, which is a nightmare situation for Denver to be in. Couldn't be a better situation for you guys because you get to see whether he can effectively run your offense, which is going to be primarily a run first offense with the hire of Arthur Smith as the offensive coordinator. We will get to that. It will be a run first offense to wear down defenses, run the football down their throats. A lot of work with the offensive line, a double set with the running backs. Najee Harris, Jalen Warren will get a ton of work this year. I wouldn't be surprised if you added a third running back in the draft either. Uh, and of course you have two running backs who are mobile one ever so slightly far more than the other. Like Russell Wilson is not the mobile quarterback he used to be. Justin Fields absolutely is. And that pairing interests me a lot with Arthur Smith and the way that he likes to run his offense because we haven't really seen Arthur Smith with a genuine quarterback who can run. And yes, we want to see Justin Fields as a QB throwing the football and all of those things. But the things that he could draw up for Justin Fields in a run first offense, that interests me. So Russell Wilson is going into this as your primary starter, but it's not costing you anything. And I saw uh, one report from one of these Twitter pages that was like, you know, if he doesn't perform well in training camp, he could get cut. That's absolutely true. I think we'll see the Pittsburgh Steelers take a rookie quarterback in the draft, 
I do think there'll be a QB coming off the board in this year's draft. And if Russell Wilson doesn't perform, you don't owe him anything. He's going to get paid by the Denver Broncos either way. If this works out really well for the Steelers, it's like it's a free deal. It's It will be an amazing piece of business, which is why I love that Omar Khan did it. I love that Russell Wilson took the vet minimum as well because he can prove himself in Pittsburgh, might earn a long-term deal. And if he doesn't, nobody loses, in theory. Justin Fields, on the other hand, what a sublime piece of business. I cannot understand, for the life of me, why the Chicago Bears agreed to this contract when they did. And I really like what Ryan Poles has done in Chicago. I think he's done a really good job. But the fact that he was willing to trade Justin Fields this far in advance for a maximum of a fourth round pick... I think it speaks to the potential value around the league. I think people obviously had their concerns about Justin Fields as a pocket passer. I understand that. Does he have the opportunity to develop in Pittsburgh? Yes, of course. Did he want to be in Pittsburgh? Yes. Did Mike Tomlin want him to be there? Yes. All things that matter. All of those things are important. If it doesn't work, it costs you a sixth round pick. So you have multiple situations in Pittsburgh right now with a quarterback or another quarterback, neither of which are costing you any real capital. You know, if Justin Fields works out and plays more than half the season for the Steelers this year, it costs you a fourth rounder. Like, it's fine. You know, it's it's so minimal. And obviously, Kenny Pickett sending him the other way. There was an exchange of draft picks. It didn't really change all that much. You kind of just moved up around in this year's draft. So pretty small transaction. But when you put it, piece it all together, the cost implement of bringing in both Justin Fields and Russell Wilson was next to nothing, which is phenomenal business. I'm really, really impressed. So obviously those are the free agents. If we talk about the rest of the roster, um, Najee Harris, Jalen Warren, those guys are going to get a ton of work under Arthur Smith. We know that it's very important. He's going to want at least two running backs. Like I said, maybe a third as well. Uh, The wide receiver room, obviously George Pickens. My question on George Pickens is, can he be a true wide receiver one? You sent Deontay Johnson to Carolina. Obviously, you got Dante uh, Dante Jackson back in return, but you sent Deontay Johnson away. So now a lot of this will fall on George Pickens. Now, it is going to be a run first offense and you are going to need your wide receivers and your tight ends to be out there blocking. We've seen this. It's been very frustrating with Kyle Pitts, but that's why John O. Smith was so good for, um, for Arthur Smith. It was very important to have him there. Uh, I think this is going to be great for the build of like Darnell Washington uh, with Arthur Smith running the football, but you are going to need another wide receiver. Uh, for some reason, Arthur Smith is, is a huge fan of Van Jefferson. I did, you know, took him to Atlanta. He's also now brought him to Pittsburgh. He's not the biggest frame wise in terms of a potential blocker, but I, like, so it's a bit of a strange addition for me that, but I really like Van Jefferson. Obviously he was a Florida Gator, so I supported him there. But in the meantime, you're going to need another wide receiver too. Like George Pickens could be a a wide receiver one, but you need somebody who's going to be at least close to him talent wise to add to your wide receiver room. So then you've got the offensive line. And I do think uh, we'll see a lot of fullback work as well. And guys blocking out of the backfield. That's another thing that Arthur Smith is a huge fan of. Why is his name so hard to say? Arthur Smith, Arthur Smith. When you say it quickly, it's horrible. Anyway, offensive line. So Broderick Jones, in my mind, should be going back to left tackle. Um, Khan has said that that's what he was drafted for and he will eventually be the franchise left tackle. And there's no way that you force him out of position to play on the right side in favor of Dan Moore Jr. Like just isn't going to happen. So in terms of looking at the offensive line overall, I think the the gaps are center and right tackle. Nate Herbig going into the season as the starter, don't love it. Um, and then if you move Broderick Jones to left tackle, you're going to need a right tackle going forward. So those things are important. I do think those things are going to be a factor. Um, and we need to consider those going into this draft. Then on the defensive side, obviously some of the rookies that you drafted have done extremely well. Keanu Benton couldn't have worked out better in my mind. I think he's going to be a huge addition. He's kind of what you wanted DeMarvin Lille to be, but way better and got a lot more snaps than I thought that he might get as a rookie um, and should really take more of a role than Larry Ogunjobi as well. So there's a lot of potential there with Keanu Benton. Pressure up the middle, a lot to like there. You've got Montrevious Adams as depth as well. Could definitely see that you might add another piece to the front three. Um, Obviously, you know, everything here is built around TJ Watt. You've added Patrick Queen to that. Alex Highsmith does a great job there. Nick Herbig looks really promising as well out of last year's class. So there's, I tell you what, looking at this and a lot of the other teams that I've done, we've done a lot of these now, the depth is immediately apparent. Like Elandon Roberts, depth on the interior there. You've got Nick Herbig, good depth. DeMarvin Lille, decent depth. Montrevious Adams, good depth. If you add another piece to the front seven there, 
I would say probably in that front three that can play in multiple alignments, that's going to be huge. And then in the secondary, like things look just as good back here. Again, in my mind, depth is apparent. Once again, I would say that corner is probably a position where you need to add one more guy. Uh, obviously, Patrick Peterson is gone, so that did kind of leave a void, but you've added Dante Jackson. Now, Dante Jackson is all right as a coverage corner. He's kind of an off-ball coverage. Mm, I, d I don't know that you want him to be your cornerback number two. He's decent. He is decent, but he's not at the elite level. Now, Joey Porter Jr. can absolutely be a like a premium talent in this league. Like, I thought he was a steal in last year's draft. I thought he should have gone in the first round. Um, but I would be looking to pair him with one of the top cornerbacks in this year's class. I do think that that is an option. Um, it's a very deep class at cornerback. There's seven to 10 guys that could go in the top two rounds very comfortably. I would be looking to maybe add one of those. Um, so that is a position that I'm keen on looking at. Now, obviously, we've got the couple of positions on the offensive line, center and right tackle, um, I think need to be prioritized. I don't really like the idea of having Nate Herbig start this season. Um, so I'd be looking at maybe Jackson Powers Johnson in the first round. I think that is definitely an option. Um, but I do like the idea of adding a cornerback that could be a premium starter as well, because... Dante Jackson can do a job for you. There are a couple of guys still floating around in free agency that you could add to this secondary, but you've got like Minka Fitzpatrick and Deshaun Elliott who have both got the real gritty, tough attitude to play safety in the NFL. Joey Porter Jr. is going to be great, but it's that other cornerback position on the opposite side that I would be looking at as a priority to kind of try and make sure that we figure that out too. So that takes us into the draft. Now at pick number 20, there are a lot of things that I would be looking at. We have to start the draft to be able to see it. I'm not going to trade up. I don't think it's... I, I, the only thing that I've got in my mind as a potential to trade up, if there was an absolute steal that you really thought you had to have, and we'll get into that, you could... You, you see this cluster of picks that you have, the 84, the 98, and the 119? I would not be opposed to packaging one of those picks with your first rounder to come up just a few spots, just three or four spots. And I'll tell you why. So let's get into this draft and get down to pick number 20 and we'll see what happens. So it depends how you want to value the first round. So if we just fly through this and just look at who's coming off the board, right? Caleb Williams at one, Drake May two, Marvin Harrison three, Malik Neighbors four. So there's a run of wide receivers. Jaden Daniel goes to the Giants. It does sound like the Giants are going to take a quarterback. I think JJ McCarthy is in that conversation, um, but it does sound like that will be an option. Um, now, of the guys that are going off the board here, there are a lot of offensive tackles that I think would be a great fit for the Steelers. I think if they were going to trade up, they did it last year for offensive tackle, it would be for one of those guys. And that is probably, in my mind, Talis Fawanga. The problem is he's not going to get past pick 10. So what do you have to package to give up to get up that far? Um, and I don't love it when it gets to that point. Now, then you've got like Joe Alt, Troy Fatanu. So there is offensive tackle potential. And then it's JC Latham. So JC Latham, a lot of people feel that maybe he would be better suited at guard. I've had that argument with a lot of people at this point um, that he's not necessarily the ideal size for an offensive tackle. So I don't love that if you're drafting him with the, with the idea in mind that he's going to fill that need at right tackle. So... Um, looking at the guys that would be available at this point in terms of why can't I find tackle? There it is. Um, so you've got Amarius Mims. Amarius Mims is definitely an option here to play that right tackle spot for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I do think that that is something that we could look at. And obviously he has been one of the names that's been so closely attached to the Steelers for that reason for such a long time. He's going to be really good in the run game. Comes from Georgia, played with Broderick Jones. You could repair those. Uh, and you've got kind of your stonewall tackles for the future, uh, both from the same school, both from a premium school. Um, and I think that could work. I do think that could work. But looking at what's available here, the thing for the Steelers, your roster is in such a good position. A lot of these are luxury picks, barring the offensive line, right? Do you pass on the tackle? And I don't know that you do. I feel like you're kind of, your hand might be forced a little bit in the first round. But you could pass on the tackle and you could certainly make a case for it with Cooper DeGean. That's one that I would make a very strong case for to play in Pittsburgh. Um, even Byron Murphy, adding Byron Murphy to that front, it's not enough of a priority for me to want to do it, but I could understand why you would. The one that I really can't get away from is Jackson Powers Johnson. And I just don't... This guy would start day one and sets the tone for your offensive line. He's going to be a huge addition for an Arthur Smith so I can't say that freaking name for your offensive coordinator's offense. I think I, I just, I don't know that I can get away from Jackson Powers Johnson for the Steelers. Other guys that I would look at, 
uh, wide receiver is definitely a priority, but I would look at wide receiver and corner in round two. Um, for me, this list out of the names on the board, I love Byron Murphy. He's going to be great in the NFL, but I think you have to prioritize other positions. The Pittsburgh Steelers are in a great position in the, in the sense that when you're on the board and without too much movement, there's a lot of things that you could draft here that would be immediate starters. Cooper DeGene is one. Jackson Powers Johnson is two. Amarius Mims is the third. Of the two here, I think the one that we prioritize the most is the center. I really do. And I think the guy that deserves to be the first rounder that has done nothing but impress all the way through the offseason, who's going to be a great downhill center, phenomenal in the run game, and can stand up and hold his own as a pass protector as well. This guy's a 10-year starter at center in the NFL. It's a home run pick, right? Far less risk attached to it than there would be with somebody like Cooper DeGene or even Amarius Mims. So I'm going to go Jackson Powers Johnson and steal him away from the Miami Dolphins, who would also be in the conversation for him at pick number 21. Um, but if he's sitting there glaring at you at pick 20, I just think I just think you have to go for it. I think it's a smart play. I think it's smart football. I think it's smart for uh, Arthur Smith. You have to say it slower. That's what it is. Uh, and the Steelers' offense. So what that means is that when you then come back on the board at pick 51, that you're probably looking more at corner or wide receiver, and more of the skill positions. Now, you could prioritize defensive line, but my thing here is like, if we look at who the defensive linemen that would be available on the board are, um, you've got Aruro, who just has the best name in the world, and I would draft him for that alone and then probably buy a jersey. Um, Dwayne Carter, Leonard Taylor. Leonard Taylor was once upon a time considered a first-round pick. It was really kind of dropped off, dropped off a little bit. Um, but there's nobody really here that lights my fire in terms of like drafting at pick 51. I think... Um, we can look more at that in the mid rounds. It's a very deep cornerback class. So you've got like Max Melton, Renardo Green, uh, Chris Abrams Drain, all guys you can get later. Cam Hart is one I've been really high on for quite a long time now. Kalen Carson, Josh Newton, Kalen King. There are guys down here. I mean, like Dwight McGlothen for me is a really good corner who could play at the next level. Ideal length, size, all of those things. Played in the SEC. A lot of tough competition that he's played against for a very long time. I do think that there's a lot of potential there too. But again, not really at this pick, at pick 51. Then you look at the wide receivers. So one of the things I like here is the potential to add somebody like Jalen McMillan or Ricky Pearsall, who have good hands, great route running, good speed, and can kind of add a really good compliment for um, George Pickens. That being said, I don't know that they fit uh, the scheme all that well. Like Roman Wilson is the same. These are smaller wide receivers who don't necessarily have the frame Maybe you're looking more at somebody like Vontez Walker who would fit the system a little better, but there's definitely something that's missing at wide receiver. I just don't know that it's here. Like if you want to add something on the opposite side in a game, in an offense that is going to be run heavy, run first, I don't know that you've got it here to be able to fix it. So I love Ricky Pearsall. I think Ricky Pearsall was great. I think the hands catching is phenomenal. Like I was in the stadium at, um, ben Hill Griffin at the Swamp for that one-hander, that incredible one-hander. He definitely adds a whole lot of something to the NFL. I think he's going to be great, but I don't know that he's a Pittsburgh Steeler. I just don't know that it's a good fit. So with that in mind, like I want to know what you guys would do. What is your strategy as Steelers fans beyond round one? Like, what do you want to look for? Like, and obviously give me your opinions on round one as well. But like, when you get beyond that, let's say you do take Jackson Powers Johnson. What's your strategy beyond that for round two and, and, and the mid rounds? Because you've got this cluster of picks, the 84, 98, 119, and I'm excited to get there and we will take a look at it. Because um, there's players down there that I think are a great fit for this team that I would like to look at. I think there is an option to add another running back within that mix. Um, I'd also be looking at potentially adding some depth to the offensive line. Um, guys like Dominic Puny is a really good one who... Um, what's the, I think it's the shuttle drill that is like a, one of the best inside scoops on whether offensive linemen are going to do really well in the NFL. And I think he crushed it. Um, he's a little bit shorter in terms of arm length. So maybe he's a guy that plays guard at the next level. Um, but a guy that I have kind of paid close attention to for quite a few months now, and it like has a lot of value. Dwayne Carter is another one that I think is a great fit for the Steelers um, to add to that three-man front on the, off, on the defensive line. So those mid rounds have a lot of kind of options for us. What I'm looking at now is what's the best fit or what's the best player available here at pick 51. And that might be, honestly, like trading out of the spot. Could potentially be that. 
All right, so I think I've found my guy. I mean, I was looking at wide receiver and some of the guys that kind of fit in here, and there is a couple of guys I really like. I do think Jalen McMillan would also be a really good fit for this team. Um, I think you could look at defensive line. I'd considered Ruka Roro, but I just think that that name is amazing. Um, I just think that it's a bit of a reach. I think he's more of a third round pick, and this is kind of, we're still in like mid round two. Um, he's a guy who kind of grew up abroad, lived in Nigeria, I think it was, came over, played basketball a lot, didn't play football until like, junior or senior year of high school or something, and then obviously arrived um, at the college level. Now, his ceiling is huge. He's one of those players who hasn't played for very long, so has this really high ceiling because they haven't realized how good he might be yet. But I don't like it here. There's a couple of things that I liked a whole lot more. So um, I did consider Ricky Pearsall, and I wouldn't be against it. I just don't know that he fits the scheme all that well for the Steelers. So let me know what you think about that. The one that I just can't get away from is kind of glaring at me right here at the top is Peyton Wilson. Like, this is just a pure, like, NFL-level linebacker who's going to be excellent in all phases. Like, the and, and he just breathes stealer to me, like, in terms of the effort, the commitment, the aggression, the nose for the football, um, shedding blocks, smashing through tacklers. Like, I just, I think this is the guy. And I think, you know, you look at the depth chart, you add Patrick Queen, you've got Alex Highsmith in there, Cole Holcomb's in there as well. But, like, Patrick Queen and Peyton Wilson, like, yes, please. So... It's not necessarily the number one need, but it is the best player available. And I think given the position and all the things that I'm looking at here in terms of what would have been available, and whether it fits the scheme and whether it's the right fit for Pittsburgh in general, I can't help but steer towards Pey Peyton Wilson. So let's go for that there. I think he can do all sorts of things for that defense, high motor, high energy, leadership, incredible stuff. So at the moment, what we're doing is just taking really good football players like a center will probably be an immediate starter, if not by the mid-season. And the linebacker, I would say also a day one starter. So that takes us to pick 84 in round three. And this is where things get really interesting for Pittsburgh because you have one, two, three picks in the next, pretty much in the next round, like 84, 98, and 119. So let's take a look at what we want to do here. Um, again, there is wide receiver. So Johnny Wilson still on the board. Uh, I don't love Jamari Thrash as much. And then there's kind of a drop off. So you do have this, although Brendan Rice is still on there, but there is definitely a drop off after that with like Jacob Cowing, Malik Washington, uh, Marcus Rosemary Jack Saint, those sorts of guys. But Rosemary Jack Saint is the sort of guy you could draft in the mid rounds in like round four or five that could be your like bigger frame playing on the outside, blocking in the run game, all of that stuff. Cause that's what he's used to. That's what he did at Georgia. And I would love to see that in Pittsburgh. I think that's the sort of guy that Smith will be looking for uh, to add to, to add to his offensive wide receiver room. So I don't hate that at all, but in terms of the guys that are still on the board, what's the quarterback situation? Is Spencer Rattler gone? He is. All right. So yeah, we're probably going to, where did Spencer Rattler go? Cause that would be interesting to me. Uh, pick 76 to the Denver Broncos. Yeah, that definitely makes a lot of sense. If it's not Spencer Rattler, I don't love what we've got left. Like Joe Milton, maybe in like round five, potentially. Like I would look at that. I would consider it. It's not the worst idea in the world. But these other guys, Jordan Travis, played a lot of college football, coming back off the injury. Don't know much about Austin Reed, ad admittedly. Uh, Talia Tungavailoa, no. Like just don't love it at all. So... Where we are here in the draft, we've got loads and loads of good offensive linemen. So there is a position here where you could say, let's take Dominic Puny, um, add some depth to the offensive line, and maybe he can kick out and play offensive tackle. Don't necessarily need him to, adds good depth, but could do it if we wanted. I'm also keen on looking at corner. So we have Renardo Green, Chris Abrams Drain, Cam Hart, DJ James, maybe. All right, I'm going to think about this. I'm going to come up with a strategy and then we're going to dive in to these next three picks. All right, so I have a strategy and I've thought about this at length. It's been a while, like the sun's basically gone down in from the moment you saw me 10 seconds ago, but all is good. I have a good idea here. Now, Johnny Wilson, this is one of the best blocking wide receivers in the class. Like this guy is what, six foot seven, I think, like genuinely, like six foot six, six foot seven. Like, pancaking defensive backs, safeties, will get downfield, will block. Like, like I think Arthur Smith would take this guy in the first round. So my theory here is that we take Johnny Wilson here, big body, big contested catch, great route runner for a guy of his size, particularly at intermediate yardage. So like 10 to 15 yards, 
really, really good wide receiver as a wide receiver too. And then I would say that you probably want to have like a slot wide receiver, whether that's Van Jefferson or Calvin Austin. And of course, you've got the tight ends. But primarily, remember, we're in a run first offense now. So I want to take Johnny Wilson here. Now with the second pick, like pick 98, two options, either running back, Trey Benson, Ray Davis, Audric Estime, Braylon Allen, Will Shipley, any of those guys I would be good with in this next couple of picks. So this is why I think I'm going to go in another direction with the second pick that we've got here because I'm looking at defensive line. Uh, McKinley Jackson, but the guy that I really like is Christian Boyd, who had a phenomenal performance in the offseason, was really good at the senior bowl. Very like good-looking defensive lineman who can line up in multiple techniques and, again, has that really high motor, huge amount of aggression. Screams Pittsburgh Steelers defense to me. I do like Dwayne Carter as well, but I think given the situation, the three-man front right here, Christian Boyd is going to be a better option and somebody who can eventually take that role from Larry Ogunjobi to play in that front. I think he would learn a ton from Cameron Haywood and I think there's a lot to offer there from Christian Boyd. So I do really like that potential pick there. So this is how we're going to run it. I want Johnny Wilson. Then I'm going to take Christian Boyd at pick number 98, should he be available. And the ideal plan for pick number 119 is to take one of the running backs that I like. And I wouldn't be opposed to trading up from 119 to about 110 to make sure that we get Audric Estime or Braylon Allen. Because I think bully ball, running downhill, running through contact, either of those guys would really suit. So what I'm going to do is assess who's left when I get to pick 98. And then we'll make a decision on that from there. So let's take Johnny Wilson, six foot six, like 230 something pound wide receiver. Not the most amount of production at FSU, but I think did a really good job and proved himself in a scheme that you could compare to the Pittsburgh Steelers. He can block. He's Well, it's not just he can block. He's an exceptional blocker. And I think that's going to be big for the way that Smith wants to run this offense. So we'll take him there. Then I'm looking defensive line. So let's make sure that our guys are still available here. So Christian Boyd still on the board. Could I get away with taking Boyd at 119? And would I be devastated if I had to take Mason Smith instead? Because if we weren't, that worried, we could guarantee ourselves the running back we want here. And I think that might be Audric Estime. Let's remember, like Najee Harris is going to have a contract situation coming up. So I'm going to take Audric Estime here, a guy that I love, who is one of the best runners in this class in terms of like running behind his pads. So I'm going to take Estime there. And then at 119, can I still get Christian Boyd? I can. Done. We're taking Christian Boyd here. That, do you know what? In terms of how to use those three picks... I really like this. Now, we do have a situation on the offensive line that we still need to think about. There just isn't anything that lights me on fire in the mid-round to be able to resolve that. So I would say your best bet with the offensive line, if the draft was to go this way, is to add like a vet and free agency or somebody who's not going to be all that expensive. That, and remember, it's not the blindside tackle. Like I would be moving Broderick Jones back to cover the blind side, and then have a guy on the right-hand side who might be a little dynamic and might be able to help you in the run game. But if it was the opposite way around and I needed a left tackle, a franchise left tackle, I would be prioritizing it more. But I think we can get away with it here. Now, do you take Joe Milton? I kind of think that you do. I kind of think it would be okay to take Joe Milton here. Um, and then we've got pick number 195. What I'll do, uh, I'm going to go and polish this draft off with the final two picks, and then we'll do a little summary at the end, wrap the video up. Obviously, please do subscribe because we'd like, we'd be doing a ton of this in the build-up to the draft, and I really enjoy doing these videos. Um, but let's go finish this off, and then I'll get to the, uh, get to the summary right at the end of the video. All right, so that's going to do it. So we've got... <laughs> Jackson Powers Johnson in the first round. Then we went Wilson Wilson, Peyton Wilson and Johnny Wilson, both guys who would be huge contributors to this Steelers team this season, like immediately. So I really, really like those picks. Uh, for some reason, they don't agree with the Audric Estime or Christian Boyd selections. I think that both of those are great options for the future of this team, for building this team out, for um, the, the things that you're trying to instill in this team as well with Christian Boyd adding that energy up front and Audric Estime. Yeah, all right. You don't necessarily necessarily need like um, a starting running back for this year, but to add a guy that can be, you know, 
a starter for you for the next four seasons or rotate in that offense for the next four seasons. Um, particularly with the Najee Harris situation coming up, I don't think it would be a surprise to see the Steelers take a running back. Like, you're leaning into that this year. So it wouldn't surprise me at all. And then I went for Kamal Haddon in round six. Six foot one corner out of Tennessee. Uh, was the best graded corner, uh, best graded defensive player for the Tennessee Volunteers this past season. Great coverage corner. And I think like for a round six pick, I don't think he'd be available there. It does feel like he's more fourth, fifth round. Ran a 4-4-2. Not necessarily the most physical corner. So maybe that's why he's going to drop down the boards a little bit. Um, but to have somebody there that could be a potential starter for the future, um, I would be quite happy with. And then I was going to take Joe Milton in at pick 178. And then he was still on the board at 195. So for a guy that can throw the football the way he does, who has the physical attributes that he does, he's a project. Absolutely. He's a huge project. He's got a lot to learn, makes some mental mistakes, made some mistakes at the senior bowl, didn't have a great week. Um, but for a late six round pick, like I don't hate it. Now, a couple of things that weren't addressed and that will be the case in any draft. There are things that you don't necessarily address. Um, the right tackle position is one of those. So I would be looking in free agency to maybe add somebody that can just do you a job for a year at right tackle. Um, I think, you know, adding the center, the linebacker, adding a wide receiver like that, all things that will make massive improvements to the team. Um, didn't necessarily find anybody at the positions we were at to take a right tackle. So let me know what you guys think. Um, that's going to wrap the video. I'm excited about the season for you guys this year. For the Pittsburgh Steelers, the position you're in, going through this roster, looking at the way that it's been built, like the potential if these quarterbacks hit or if one of these quarterbacks can play well for you guys, there's a ton of potential there. So um, I'm going to leave it at that. I do really appreciate you being here. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, thank you so much. Please do subscribe. We'll be doing a ton more of this stuff over the next month and then analyzing all of the drafts after they've been done uh, in May and June. So a lot of stuff to look forward to. Please do hang around, leave a like on the video, drop me a comment, let me know what you think, uh, and I will see you guys in the next one. Have an amazing weekend.